Hey, welcome to Bicycle Garage. Today's part two of the Rat Rod build. C10 known as the Lawsuit. If you haven't seen the old part one yet, you should snip that up and then snag on back for part two because it'll make more sense in the brain bucket. I got a long list today. She's all organized up here for us. We got mirrors and we're gonna do some body work with some license plates. We're gonna fix the bed of the truck. I got some signs and stuff. We'll, you know, throw some band-aids on her. Tailpipe cup holders. you never seen them. I'm about to change your life. We gotta make some sort of center console. Cause you gotta have somewhere to put a guy's vice grips and registration to the wrong vehicle. We're gonna consider lowering the old girl with some heat because it's the wrong way. And then I have potentially question mark brakes because I'm still not wholly convinced that you need them, but we'll at least take a look at them and then let's drive it. We got to test on this thing because we basically have no choice. And today is probably the day that this place is going to burn down. So sit tight, relax, and let's have some fun. These are awesome. I think I'm really gonna enjoy them. Super easy to put on. You just snip some bolts through here, and these take the mold screws. I don't have any, so we're gonna do the right thing and just jam some bolts in there and cross thread them. And same with up there. And uh, this side actually has some screws laying around. It. Ooh, we caught a Jerry. Look at that. Yeah. The old peanut butter snags them up pretty good. Anyway. This side's got some screws already in her, so I think we'll try to borrow some from here, and she's already got some bolts snipped through, so I'm going to pop them on fast, because it should only take a guy about 16 hours. Well, the guy's pretty uncertain that I'm certain that you got to have mirrors in the state to be legal and whatnot, so I did the right thing and just grabbed the biggest ones that I could find possible, you know? That side's good. Seems like that should be good enough. Maybe one down here. That'll work just fine. You know, after years of scientific testing, I've been able to prove that if a guy just uses the wrong bolts, just cross threads them, holds even better than that old Loctite, and technically it's free. I don't know about you fellers, but that took her all the way from ugly to, you know, at least she cooks breakfast for a guy. And this side, those these screws did not work uh, over here. So of course what I did was, I got lazy and just jammed some different size self-tappers in there, but I mean, they're solid. You can hang your laundry on there, guaranteed. Well, let's go ahead and move on to body work. I'm going to show you how to take care of this. Ooh, fly. Got him. Pretty easily. And all you need is your standard issue of Tanya Harding and some license plates. And you're just going to gently beat out all the bolts. So, you know, just ease in there. And you don't want anything in the way. So just come in here and loosen it up. Watch the paint. And that's the paint. definitely don't want it rusting. You gotta get that mud out of here. It doesn't get in there fast. That seems pretty good. Then take the old claw end of her and you gotta ease it open a little bit over here. Like that. You want the front flap out more than the rear flap so the flappage is at a flap angle. You know, portion it to the door hinge to the back side of the fender edge. Now get this in here and just twick it like that and you just twist like this, because you gotta have door gaps. See, that's perfect. What is that? Weather stripping? Now we're ready to patch. 
get your peepers in here see what I'm working with basically we just cleaned her out here a little bit and there's still some mud in there but we'll let her ride for now it's everything we kind of got out and now you can see I got a slot in here see that you can see it I you got it so we'll just take our plate and then we're gonna ease it in here the guy's gonna be all artsy fartsy this is where you'd really want to pick what license plate you want, but I don't care. So I went with this one. I'm just going to slide her in like this. Get her up in here. Just like that. But I don't like how it's sitting here, so I'm going to get a Ruriver and clean that out a little bit. Need that plate to get in here. Gotta open her up a little bit. This. The other thing is, when you're working with the sharp rust, definitely don't wear gloves because they just get in the way. There. Fixed. Here's the finished product on her. I did snag another one in to get her down here a little bit and then I ran just one self-tapper and that kind of brings them together. But I don't like shiny stuff, so I try to keep her minimal on the old screws. This particular side, she's been a little more weight reduced than the other and she's a little floppy. And that's not gonna do us much good because she ain't snipped on down here. So, I think what I'm going to do is just get this off all the way. You know, we'll get that out and then we'll just make our own down there. And some fellers might take this dent out while they're here, but I'm not. See, for me, that tells a story. I don't know, whiskey dent or fence post or maybe the ex wife. Well, she was fighting me over here, so I just took the old, you know, and just zanged her off. That's much better. You know, these here door gaps, they mean everything to us professional auto body folks. We take a lot of pride in them, so I'm just going to hook the peepers on and eyeball them. And we'll rebuild them here with the old license plate. And the goal on this side is try to just use two screws. If I can, I'll probably get that one like that and snag one in up here. And then I'm going to jam this one down here. Yeah, something. Well, oh, that's perfect right there. And zing zing! Put a screw in right there. And that'll, you know, get all three of these here metals just good. It should only vibrate a lot. I get these screws at Menards, which is probably like your Lowe's or Home Depot maybe. But you gotta do it right and get the button head ones. They're flat. Something like that. Get in there now. Get in there. Get in there. There we go, and then just bring her in. Alright. One more. Right there. Whoa. I think I'm gonna zing just one more. Dang it! Right there. There we go, that side's done. That looks pretty dang good. Get your eye down that. I think this cab corner's just fine. I can live with that, but this other one over here, she's, you know, I guess some would call it non-existent. It's pretty bad. So let's go ahead and fix this, because guy doesn't want his cold snacks. I mean, they'll come right out of the cab here. I'll show you. They're gonna go right through, so. We gotta at least slow that down a little bit. You know, if a guy's not an AS3 certified mechanic like me, this might just look like a bent up license plate, but this is actually a cab corner. We're gonna do on this side over here. And it's pretty easy actually. I just used the bedside to get this roll, just, you know, worked her over, snipped it, folded the flaps, and then I just used the corner of the hood up here and just, you know, went to town on her. Worked pretty good. I think 
just eyeballing it. She's gonna go right in. If you're wondering why all these say South Dakota on them, they're actually uh, from my late grandpa James. He saved them all from 80 on, apparently. I got a big box back here. and I think it's pretty cool you can help a feller out one more time. All right, we'll work this bad boy in here. Look at that. You looking at it? Did you look yet? I just could not believe it. I think I'll go with that. Just get one on here to hold her in place. Guy can get back and look at it a little bit. Right there. Good enough. Yeah. Maybe one more screw right there. There we go. Fix the old cab corner delete. Oh, that's probably Jesse James calling. Needs a fabricator. Oh. Next, let's get this bed fixed. I'm not opposed to the old holes, but this has just got me a little concerned, I guess. One of these bedsides comes off on the old highway. You're in trouble. She'll live up to its nickname, Lawsuit. So I think what a guy's gonna do is just get some rope or something and kind of just snag these in tight. And then I can bridge that gap because if I move this, I see that coming over. So maybe I can bite into here and then get into that and try to squish them together a little bit. And maybe fix some of the holes back here. Maybe I'll do the opposite up there. Because if I haul something, it's probably going to be up there because I ain't got no sitter downer gate on her. Well, I went ahead and used one of those. Pulled the couch on top of the Ford Taurus straps and brought her in. And you really want to take your time here because you don't want the box sides all messed up. Found this tape measure and we're just going to check. Yeah, that's good enough. So now we got to get a plan to get these wheel wells kind of latched in place. But first thing, I got to get rid of all the old bolts around the, you know, you know what I mean. Well, there's basically what a guy's got going on. What I'm doing with the plates here, I just found the support beams and in each of those, and you know, this it'll probably hold some cold snacks, but I don't know about anything else. And dang old leg blew another hole over there, so I think if I just take this here and just kind of ease it over, there we go. That's fine. So I'll probably do the same over there as I did here. And I got a stop sign. I think I'll both throw back there. But first, if I did everything wrong the first time, which I usually do, when I take this off, the bed's gonna go. Oh, not too bad. Boy, she's got some wobble on her, but the wheel wells will be staying in place. I might just have to find something to go from here to there and permanently keep them together. Uh, by the way, these one-way signs, and that stop sign, that one, that's from Chad Good, friend of mine. Thanks, bud. Appreciate it. But I got some, uh, I got probably, I need, I don't know, maybe 10 more. I got a few of Grandpa's left, but I want to hang on to them for keepsakes. But if you got some license plates and you want to contribute to this, just fire them over to my P.O. box and I'll snip them in here. Or if you've got other ideas for back here, go ahead and bleep bloop them down below because I got holes up here I gotta finish and 
here and a little bit over there and there's a spot here basically this area a little bit right there and then you know that just let's just call it this this area here um, I gotta put metal in so you got an idea bleep bloop it or send me something if you want that'd be awesome you know when a guy gets some time off also known as never I like to go to the old antique shops and see what they got laying around and I'll be dipped if I didn't find this here. Duffy's Malt Whiskey Case. It says 1860. And then Rochester Nye, which I think is New York. I don't know. It's way over yonder. But uh, I really like it. And, you know, it smells like America. She's even got the leather hinges back here and it opens. Look at all that cubic feet in there. And the guy's brain started whirling around. And I thought, you know what? This would make a nice center console for lawsuit and I think that's exactly what I'm going to do but you can't have a center console without somewhere to put your cold snacks so I've got some chunks of three inch OD uh, muffler pipe here and I guess the plan is I'm going to snag these on here somehow two of them of course and then uh, still have our lid but got a place for cold snacks and then we'll plop this down between the seats and boom we got luxury I don't know what this side says, but it has to do with the whiskey, so I'm pretty sure it's just awesome. Well, I got her plopped in here, but she's got a cantilever on her in account of the transmission tunnel here. So I'm going to have to get some sort of spacer down there, but look at all that guy fits. I mean, that's made in heaven right there. Well, I found my spacer for the council here. I just borrowed a 2 by 4 out of the rafter and just hoping it wasn't load bearing, but I think we're okay so I think we're okay so far. She's creaking on me. So I'm just gonna take some nails and bang her on into this and basically that's kind of the shape we'll get and I think that'll slip right in there and work just fine. I really like the color and aging of the sides of the unit here, but the top is, I don't know, she's bright. I don't know if it had something sitting on it or it was covered or what, but I know how to fix this and that's with a little heat here. So you're gonna take your finger burner 400 and if you just tsst, right on top, just tsst, it'll change the color, I'll show you. So it gives her a little more character. It looks really nice if you got some knots in the wood. That'll bring them right out. Yep. There. That looks a little better, a little more matchy matchy. I whipped up the strap real quick and now I'll just tack all these on here. That'll work. Well, that's definitely not pretty, but it's functional. <laughs> See? So I'm just gonna throw her on here like this and I've already got some holes pre-drilled. Just run these down like this. Now depending on your particular build, you might want to stop here and just let the metal flash rust or paint them or whatever. But I got something else in mind I'm going to show you to snazz these up a little bit. I already got this side done, but basically take your favorite can koozie. Mine just happens to be the old vice grip run. And snip them over top of these and flash them up a little bit. Just like that. This will also help hide up my booger welds down here on the bottom so you can't see those. That's nice. I got one last thing for these and I'm going to call her done. I got one of these here door guard things, you know, you on the edge of the door. It's real nice. Got it at Walmart. I'm not supposed to go in this tight of circles, so take your time. But she'll come around for you. 
All right, look at that. Slide your koozie up into it. That's perfect. There we go. That's gonna work just fine. The guy won't slice his hands up there on that pipe, you know. I like that. This is where a guy should probably measure and, you know, make sure she's centered and pre-drill and probably run some sort of bolt through there, but I'm gonna do the right thing and just slam it through the floor with some self-tappers. Keep this right where she's at, I like it. Get on down here. Yes. There we go. Installed. Oh, that's perfect. Yep. Nailed it. Well, the guy pondered on it and we're gonna go ahead and just lower this unit, but let's talk about this for a minute. Let's look at this C20. And this, believe it or not, has the correct parts, which is a drop spindle, which moves the spindle position from way down here to up here. And that, of course, brings your frame and your body down. And then it's also got a drop coil in it. And then alignment and new ball joints and everything else, this is gonna end up with a five inch drop in the front that still handles and does the stuff that it's supposed to. And then you can also just heat them up or maybe you just wanna snip them off. Uh, you can do that as well, but there's some things you need to know about that. You know, a guy doesn't know a lot about lower end trucks. I usually get them up in the air so you can get over the weeds and whatnot, but let me learn on you what I do know about lowering them. First things first, no matter how much money you spend, it's gonna ride like crap. And, you know, it gets you right here and you might even pee a little blood. So make sure you consider that. Most importantly, if you go to hacking these off or heating them, it's really gonna be bad, fellers. I mean, you got diagrammical engineering up front. You know, people of science built that front end and. When you start messing with these, it doesn't turn right, it jumps all over, certainly ain't going to handle for you. And the other thing is, it's really dangerous. Uh, once you start heating these, um, they can break unexpectedly and you might want to take a right and you're just going to shoot left into the guardrail, so make sure you take that into consideration too. Basically, I would say never, ever cut or heat your springs. So, now that we went through all of that, I'm gonna do the right thing and heat my springs. A couple things. Uh, a, say a prayer for me. And two, I'm gonna show you outside of the truck what I'm doing under the truck, because the old peepers ain't gonna work very good under there. And then maybe you can kinda get the gist of what I'm doing here. There's a way to do this. Uh, to basically maximize the length of your life. So I'm gonna try to help you out there if you so choose to do this, which I don't recommend. Okay, so basic coil spring. Obviously you've got a cup on the bottom. You got a cup on the top. And what we're wanting to do is just bring this down. But what I see a lot of other fellers doing on the interwebs and even in person, is they just take their torch or their bottle or whatever they got and they just start doing this heating up one side. What that's going to do that you can't see is this coil spring is going to be shaped like a banana if you just heat one side. In the vehicle it's just going to kind of collapse and look a little funky but basically what this coil spring is wanting to do the entire time is just eject out of your car or truck and you want to kind of avoid that and you need these puppies. So what I like to do is go back and forth on each side. So as an example, if I see this spring here, I'm going to heat it here. But if I heat it here, it's going to collapse on this side. I need to come back on this side and heat it here so that 
this one's collapsed down here, this one's collapsed down here. And then you keep working back and forth. And eventually, where this red pane is, is where I'm going to heat on the spring. And then on the back side, you would have the opposite coils. And it doesn't work right at all. But, you know, it brings her down a little bit better. The other thing that I want to show you with paint, a lot of people have the habit, because they use little bottle torches, they do this with heat. They just get a little section, cherry red, and then that bends sharply down, you know, to get the right drop. But that's a fragile point now. And she's more likely just to snap out of there when you do a little bit. So when you get your heat, you really want to drag her, drag it around like that. Heat up this section so it slopes down like that. <sighs> That's heavy. So that's kind of the AB3s of doing it the right way. Hmm. Where are these leaves coming from? one side done. Did okay. I got her a little too hot on back her side, but stayed in the cups okay. Pretty significant difference. And um, you know, I brought her all the way down to the bump stop, so there's there's nothing here. So if I'm gonna do it this way, I figure, you know what, it's gonna ride bad anyway. You just just bring her down right onto the bumps. So now I'm gonna drag my equipment around to the other side and uh, probably use a little bit of my own advice and put some mitts on this time. She got toasty. Well, there you have her. Front end is down. I don't know how far down it went, I guess. A couple inches anyway. Now she's all raked up. I don't know. kind of like that look too. The back end here, she's got overload springs on it, so I'm going to have to take care of them first. And I've seen a couple different sets of these. I've seen them off the front here, and then I've seen them off the back as well. And I don't know if these are the factory ones or the other, the other flavor is. If you know, comment below, because I'm really interested if this is some sort of aftermarket setup or an option or what. Since I've already got the fire wand 88 out, you know, I'm gonna just, and then that'll come right out, and then, you know, a guy doesn't gotta fight them nuts off of there and all that other stuff. I ain't gonna reuse them anyway. Look at this frame. Get your eyes on there, fellers. I bet you weren't expecting that at all. I mean, she's, she's good. Well, here's the aftermath of that. <laughs> Worked out good. It only took like five minutes. Both sides are down and you know as the guy was walking around the back here I saw this little spare tire carrier and of course I zinged that off too because let's be honest I'm never gonna have a spare tire. And then uh I needed some weight back here because she's pretty light so I threw these Holly performance heads up here. You know them then we'll work get some weight down here. And we'll do the same thing to the back. I'm gonna leave it on the stands because the guy can get his belly under there. I'd definitely drink beer with this guy. There's normally a brake line running across there and well he went ahead and just snipped it off and threw a cap in there. So maybe there's you know this brake might work. And that's probably just good enough. Just finished the old rears up here and I guess we'll drop her down and see what we got. Sweet. So I did keep 
keep about four inches from the bump stops to the axles. So I wanted a lot of room in there. In case the guy's got a house of junk around. I like that rake though. I think that looks pretty damn good. What do you guys think? Bleep blooper down there in the comment box. Well, that's a bummer. Guy wanted to roll the old door open here and get some more light in. And she's pitch black out. So the old time got away from the feller. So fortunately there's gonna be no testing this time. But that means I gotta sneak a thrash session in for the next few days. Because that shows in whatever next few days plus a couple more is. And I'd like to have at least two brakes. So We'll bring her back in and work on some brakes and then we'll do some testing. So if you've ever heated your coil springs or chopped them or done some other crazy stuff, put her down there in the old comments box. I'd like to read those. And uh, stay tuned for part three, I guess. If you're not subscribed, I'd really appreciate it if you could hit that button and don't forget the bell thing too. And uh, we'll catch you next time.